The infinite vastness of the universe has had an enormous attraction for us since time immemorial. Who or what else is out there? It would be awesome, so awesome if we didn't miss something. Nate Arizona is allegedly able to make contact with aliens. He takes our reporter and a handful of daring adventurers on a tour that is out of this world. We spent three days driving around the Nevada desert from overblown UFO hype to the fabled Area 51. We're tired of the secrecy. We have a right to know what you guys are hiding. The goal of the tour, to see a real UFO. And we never expected how well that would work out. Nate, I think we found something. Welcome to an adventure that's literally out of this world. Booking the adventure is unspectacular. Reporter Tarbon searches classic travel portals for UFO hunting and finds exactly one tour. Three days in the southwest of the USA for $2,500 per person. That's a huge amount of money, but I can't imagine you'll really get to see UFOs out there. To me, it sounds like a clever rip-off. You write UFO on it, charge a lot of money, and then people pay for it. So I'll do that now, just to see what really happens. Galactic alien hand or earthly rip-off? What can we expect? A few days later, we are in Utah, where the tour starts tomorrow. And it starts early. The tour group meets at 5 a.m. Good morning, guys. Are we going to hunt UFOs? Yes, we are. Yes. So these are the UFO hunters. Graphic designer Heine and his daughters McKenna and Alex. She has her daughter Lennon with her. They can hardly wait for the tour to start. I don't know if they're little green men in spaceships. I, I don't know about that, but I do believe there's a phenomenon. And, and what that UFO phenomenon is, I have no idea. All right. But at some point in time, I hope, you know, the hope is that uh, we'll find out. Promising to deliver the answers, organizer Nate. And to keep an open mind when we're trying to understand what we can't explain. So that's what's important about this journey. It's a, it's, it's a learning experience, it's a teachable moment, especially for the skeptics. Skeptics. Reporter Torben immediately knows who he means. The next two days we drive through the southwest of the USA. The ultimate goal of the trip, Area 51, the secret base of the US military. But even on the way there, there are supposed to be signs of extraterrestrial lives. First of all, there are hours of beautiful scenery to admire. After about 140 kilometers, it's time for the first stop. Cathedral Gorge, a state park out of this world. What we're seeing here is an actual alien planet that's not Earth. <laughs> so I wanted you guys to come see this on the way to Area 51 because, you know, maybe this is what another planet would look like if you were stuck in some kind of real life Star Wars film. Even though it looks spaced out, we probably won't meet any real aliens here. A first disappointment for us. And what expectations do the others have for the tour? It would be awesome, so awesome if we did witness something. You know, we're going out to the gates of Area 51 around the Area 51 area. It would be neat. It would be really neat if we actually saw something in the sky. Um, yeah, but but uh, answers. I'd like answers. Uh, I would like somebody to tell me uh, what it is that these aerial phenomenon are. Well, my dad invited me first off, but he's always been talking about aliens to us. He's taken my brothers on trips like this, but never us girls. So now's our chance. <laughs> UFO hunting as a family tradition. Heine is here to get answers. But why is he so fascinated by UFOs? He doesn't want to tell us yet. After about an hour, the journey continues. After all, sightseeing out of this world is only supposed to be a small part of the adventure. It all looks beautiful here, but somehow it still doesn't have much to do with UFOs. 
Actually, this Area 51 tour is supposed to provide real answers. The man who promises them, Nate Arizona. What makes him an expert? I've seen stuff out there. I, I, first time I went out there was when I was eight years old with my, with my family. About eight years old and I've been going out two or three times a year ever since. And with that experience, is Nate now just raking in money or is there more to it? It's like a, a serious topic uh, that's worthy of discussion. You don't have to take an official stance. In fact, I discourage people from believing in something in, in the absence of evidence without thoroughly researching it, you know, but I ask him to keep an open mind. Nate has been organizing tours for almost 20 years to convince UFO skeptics and inform believers. It's super to hear how enthusiastic Nate is. The only problem for me is there's just a lack of evidence somehow, not even a hint. That's what the second stop of the day is supposed to provide. Nate leads the group through a Native American nature reserve, Lion's Mouth. Here there is supposed to be real evidence of alien visitation. This is sacred to some people, and I respect the culture, the local culture, that can, we consider this sacred. <laughs> In the past, this mountain was a place of pilgrimage for Native Americans. Today, it mostly attracts UFO fans from all over the world. But why? What awaits us at the summit? And this here, you guys, is the ancient alien rocket ship I was telling you guys about in the panel here. The goal of the hike are these up to 2,000-year-old morals. What's so special about them? There's no other petroglyph or pictograph site in all of southern Utah that looks anything like this. But a lot of these pictographs would suggest some sort of alien influence in the Americas here long, a long time ago. This looks like a rocket ship to me. What does it look like to you? Does it look like a rocket ship out of a Ray Bradbury film with the fire yeah. and the smoke coming out? But this right here reminds me of some sort of alien or spirit, spirit being right here. Look at this. You look up here. You see that being with large antennas coming out of its head right there? Sounds far-fetched. Among many tribes in southern Utah, the so-called star people play an important role. Beings from other planets that regularly come to Earth in UFOs. According to legend, they taught the indigenous people their language and manners centuries ago. To this day, the existence of aliens and UFOs in the region is accepted as a fact. Petroglyphs are very, very compelling uh, uh, when it comes to uh, to that. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's very, very compelling evidence that uh, that we were visited at some point in time. I don't know. I don't know. I think it could look like anything, to be honest. I think it could be anything. <laughs> I don't really think it's a UFO. Opinion in the family is clearly divided, so what does our reporter think of the evidence? It's impressive. It could be anything, of course, but it looks very different from all the other drawings around it. What they've painted there doesn't look like anything human. It's quite exciting. The first day seems to have left its mark on skeptic Tarben, and it's now coming to an end. The group has been on the road for 14 hours. They spent the night in Pioch, an old Wild West town. Heine has meanwhile come to trust us and decided to share his story with us. The first time that I had an experience uh, with a UFO was in La Mirada, California. I was 10 years old. It was dark, it was nighttime, and uh, we saw a bright light uh, that was hovering over a bunch of homes. We just sat there, we just watched it. We just watched it up in the sky uh, for a few minutes and uh, then all of a sudden it just faded out of view. That was my first experience that I had with UFOs and really my only experience, um, but uh, that's what we got, got me started in it. Heine's mission in life. Decades later, he still wants to know what exactly he saw. Maybe tomorrow he will get the answers he has been longing for. Day two.
The day when the group is supposed to see real UFOs. New to the hunt is Ron, who is a day late because his car broke down. The 72-year-old is a retired engineer who used to work on rockets for NASA and the government. Oh, I'm excited. I haven't been to Area 51 for 35 years. <laughs> so, last time I was there, I almost got arrested. <laughs> In the 80s, UFO research was just that little bit wilder. With other enthusiasts, Ron was always on the limits of Area 51, trying to find out what was going on behind the fences. Are we going to find out today? This is it. We're going to head out on the road. So the group is now heading out to Area 51. We'll even spend the night there so we can see real UFOs. The hunt is finally taking off. After three hours, it's time for the first stop of the day. There's the Alien Research Center sign. So what is this? A lab? No, it's a souvenir shop. No real evidence inside. So is all the alien hype just good sales strategy after all? For now, a hunting mood is a little deflated. But for you guys, as UFO believers, is this kind of like silly or making fun of it? Or how do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's, it's entertaining and that's... If we can get people interested in the subject, then we can start working with teaching them the truth about it. So the self-professed UFO researchers take it with a sense of humor. And there's probably no other way. The UFO fan shops have everything on offer that alien hunters need, and plenty they don't need. I like yeah. China, but I love my alien oh my God. The UFO hype business is booming. Nate is making good money too. $2,500 per person for the all-inclusive adventure. How do you come up with the prices? I don't have any competition. The prices are to take the, into consideration, I have to take into overhead all the weeks of planning a, an adventure like this. It takes weeks sometimes, so I usually need a month. These preparations inevitably lead Nate and his group to the highlight of the tour, the mecca for UFO hunters, the dream of all alien fans. We're coming up to the forbidden area here. Maybe, maybe another mile or so. First stop, the main entrance to Area 51. Well, the entrance remains close to us, of course, but the restricted area behind this fence is shrouded in legend. Some believe that aliens are held prisoner here. Whistleblowers claim that alien technology is used here, but the fact is, sightings occur here time and again. People report inexplicable occurrences and unidentified flying objects in a no-fly zone. That's why the facility plays a big role among UFO researchers. Ron too used to come here often, researching and looking for evidence of UFOs. How does it feel to be back here after 35 years? Part of it's exactly like I remember it, and part of it's like, no, not the same. They've had a lot more signs, like didn't have drones in. But the... Uh, I guess you'd call it the ambiance, uh, the, the, just the general feeling is the same. Whatever is happening a few kilometers away, none of the group can escape it. You stand here and it definitely feels very, very strange. Something's going on here and you can actually sense it. And although you don't see anything at all, it feels strange. The aura also has an effect on the usually cool leader Nate. He's getting increasingly restless. I want, you know, I feel like this we have a right to know what you guys are hiding concerning 70-year-old technology. We don't want to be prisoners on this prison planet. We want to join the people from the stars. Hey, guys. Uh, all right. <laughs> Tour guide Nate seems like a man possessed, losing control and screaming out his rage. He wants the secret base to finally give up its secrets. That's how I release the anger that's been pent up for years. I'm tired of them toying with me. 
I want, you know, I felt like this is like a home away from home. These guys are experimenting on the American people. I'm, I'm convinced of it. Right. But the real secrets are in there, and there's probably a couple dozen Edward Snowdens in there that just need to be inspired. <laughs> by, by us? By, by our shouting? Fire, please, they'll see this, they'll see these, these, these things, and they'll say, maybe we should, maybe it's worth it to change the world for the better. Is that, is that why you bring the tours here? Yes. Nate is serious. He makes a lot of money with this tour for sure, but his real motivation goes deeper. Nate wants to enlighten and expose the state secrets. And we are part of his campaign, because here, a few kilometers from the Area 51 main entrance, the group is going to camp out tonight to try and see real UFOs. What no one suspects at this point is that this night will be unforgettable. Now the time has come. The big moment has arrived. Tonight I finally want to see proof. Everything is prepared for it. It looks so beautiful here. Now I just need to find something. The hunters are not unprepared, of course. Ron has brought along night vision devices. In the night sky above us, they amplify the light of the stars and the light of everything else. What I want you to do is go out and look at the night sky and see what you can find. You will find UFOs, almost guaranteed. All right. This is the moment the whole adventure has been leading up to. Are we actually going to discover something here? I haven't seen anything at all so far, but it's really exciting. It's just so enthralling because I could find something any second now. McKenna and Tom scan the night sky for glowing objects moving in an unnatural way. Planes and satellites fly forwards in straight lines. UFOs, on the other hand, tend to hover in one place. At least, that's the theory. McKenna, I think I found a UFO. I think there's a UFO. Yeah. You can take this device. It's back there over your car. It's over your car, a little bit to the right. Here, take this guy. You see it? Like a little bit to the right. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like flashing. Right? Like right? sporadically flashing. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a UFO. Tom has obviously fallen under the spell of the chase. Is this really a UFO? It's annoying that UFO footage is always so blurred. This time because the camera is filming through night vision, a professional has to confirm the find. Nate! Nate! I think we found something. You'll have to tell us. The big moment. What do the pros say? What is it? Have we really discovered a UFO? Time for the experts' verdict. Person in relationship to it's the It's like it's pretty down close to the line of the mountain. Oh, okay, right down there, right up the mountain. Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. What is it? What is it? Is it a UFO? I don't know. It's a flashing light. It's so it is an right, right at the at the rim line. So it's an unidentified flying object, is it? Yes, and it's right now it's disappearing. Unbelievable. There is actually a UFO in the sky. Something is going on here. Is it alien? Are we seeing secret military tests here? Whatever it is, there is actually a no-fly zone over Area 51, and yet something is hovering there right now. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I think we've really discovered a UFO. Just a UFO. Order? A unique experience. We've actually discovered something in the Nevada desert. Guide Nate is happy too. He has shown his group what he promised. It turns you into a believer when you have the right kind of tools. UFO veteran Ron feels like he's traveled back in time. Yeah, Ron, you're so right. Except for these 
German dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Two days. 1,800 kilometers and $2,500 per person later, we have indeed seen the inexplicable Area 51. The next morning, what do the travelers think of the UFO hunt? It was a lot of fun, yeah. I loved being here with my dad and my sister and my baby. It was great. What we saw last night was just extraordinary. You know, who knows who knows what we saw, but uh, but uh, it was it was something uh, incredible that we got to actually experience something out at uh, the foothills of Area 51. Has, Has that answered all your questions? Uh, no, no, uh, it, it won't answer any of my questions until I see a UFO close up. At least Heine doesn't have to search alone anymore. His daughters have also caught the buck, and reporter Torben. That was two really incredible days, and I've seen so much of this country. And last night I saw something that I simply cannot explain. It's unbelievable. And now I need to have a good think about what exactly happened here. The verdict is unanimous. The hunt was a complete success and apparently worth $2,500. After all, we did experience something last night, and it may well take a new generation of UFO hunters to sort out exactly what it was.